Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Star Charts. And in this episode, we're going to be talking about the Davian system, located here in the UEE. The Davian system has three jump points, one leading to Crawshaw, one leading to Cathart, and another one leading to Ferron. All right, now let's zoom in to the Davian system and talk a little bit about it. The Davian system. It's best known as the site of the first contact between humans and the Banu. Discovered early in mankind's extrasolar expansion, Davian was charted by Wendell Dops and named after his father-in-law. The most unusual facet of Davian's discovery was what it represented to the border astrophysics community. Contemporary science has predicted that no additional jump points would exist in the Crawshaw system. When Dops charted the jump to Davian, it meant that textbooks had to be rewritten and it ultimately led to a flurry of advancement in jump scanning technology. Davian itself was not seen as so interesting. A slight orange type K main sequence star, Davian was immediately considered nothing to write home about by its original explorers. Four planets orbited the star, the second of which was a candidate, albeit not a top list candidate, for terraforming. The system held no exotic resource caches or strategic military chokeholds. It seemed destined to become a lightly populated backwater star system adjacent to more developed areas of the Empire. That all changed quickly in 2438. Vernon Tarr, an independent nav jumper, opened fire on what he believed to be another private spacecraft attempting to jump his meager claim in the system. The ship in question turned out to be a Banu merchantman and the unfortunate incident, which luckily did not lead to loss of life, became humanity's first introduction to the Banu Protectorate. The UPE quickly established a military-led watch station in the system to take control of the situation, and the first interstellar treaty with the Protectorate slowly took shape. The ultimate irony for all parties involved, not discovered for many years, was that Davian was not especially close to the Banu core worlds. The ship originally engaged by Tar was a fugitive fleeing civilization. The result for the Davian system was electrifying. Every independent operator in the galaxy wanted real estate in the system, now set to become the jumping off point to trade with the Banu. With the potential for exotic materials, alien technology, and more, the system was flooded with all forms of humanity, and Davian II developed into one of the more populated human worlds in the galaxy. Babco Geobuilders, which had won a low-ball terraforming bid before first contact, was propelled up the stock market as the demand for hangars, habicubes, and underground domes soared. All right, well, now let's talk about the worlds. Davian 1, a large, battered, and gray rock that is visually similar to Earth's moon. Davian 1 makes a reasonable poster child for the concept of a useless world. Coralless and without any interesting minerals, there is absolutely no reason to set foot on the planet. In fact, there have been no recorded landings on Davian 1 since the initial system exploration mission determined that it could never be a candidate for terraforming. Davian 2, or Cestulus. Davian 2, named Cestulus, after terraforming, was completed in the early 26th century. Is the system's inhabitable world, Cestulus has a very thin atmosphere, and the majority of human habitation is beneath a rocky surface. Elaborate biodomes pump air from above ground into habicubes constructed to stack miles beneath the planet's crust. The world has no particularly interesting resources and the, the bulk of its economy is associated with transport and shipping. Despite the distance from the Banu, the infrastructure that has sprung up on Davian has allowed it to become the so-called gateway to the Eastern Empire. Dozens of major cargo runs crisscross the system and the planet is dotted in spaceports with facilities to entertain and supply long-haul transport crews. Jata is Cestulus's most emblematic city. Though not technically the world's capital, located underneath an ever-expanding warren of air production facilities, the city is most famously home to Aegis Dynamics 
corporate headquarters and initial production facilities. The base primarily produces components rather than a particular ship design. More exotic resources are imported and the need is consistent. Beyond Aegis's footprint in the city, the unique open-air underground cityscape has become symbolic of the Davian system as a whole. For reasons not completely understood by sociologists, Cestulus became a flashpoint for political upheaval in 2529. The feared economic collapse that accompanied the introduction of the empire's unified currency, the UEC, led to a bloody two-week riot in the city of Jata. Only military intervention stopped the protest. In 2545, the planet was the site of terrorist bombings that left thousands dead, with bombs being planted specifically to collapse some of the planet's more populated, overgrown biodomes. These strikes kicked off a series of similar, and still unattributed, attacks across the UPE that led to the adoption of Ivar Messer's Prime Citizen Plan. In recent years, Cestulus has become the adopted podium of everyone from Terran secessionists to anti-alien xenophobia groups. Travelers are well warned that owing to the system's history of political upheaval, the advocacy forces and local militia units in Davian are no-nonsense elites. Your cargo will be scanned when you enter the system. Land, take off, and exit. Way stations and well-equipped militia spacecraft are the rule here, and only the most advanced artificial holds and scanner blankets can possibly move contraband through Davian's galactic truck stop. There is no humor for smugglers, even the most harmless varieties. Davian 3 is a smog planet with an acid-based atmosphere, with no apparent resources worth the risk of establishing a protective enclosure colony. The planet remains uninhabited. Rumors do persist that Davian 3 is a dumping ground for troublemakers and others who find themselves on the wrong side of the region's organized criminal syndicates. The planet's pools of acid will quickly render any body, or spacecraft, or most anything else, unrecognizable. Davian 4 is a beautiful but inhospitable ice giant. Owing to its orbit's proximity to the system's jump point, no textile. A little known fact about the Davian system is that it was home to the first Royal Aerospace Squadron as the personal protector of the Senator of Davian. When the pirate incursions of the Gauss system were starting to escalate, the High Commander Legit Merenium transferred the first Royal Air Space Squadron to the Gauss system, separating their relationship with the Senator. The first Royal Air Space Squadron will always consider the Senator and his forces friends, but now have a duty to defend the Gauss system from the local pirates there. Now thank you all for coming out and checking out the third in our Star Chart series and stay tuned for more. We'll see you in the verse.